In this video, I'm going to be talking about the differences between cable and DSL. We are also going to look at the advantages versus the disadvantages of both services. Here we have a DSL modem on the left and a cable modem on the right. The DSL modem is connected to the internet using the gray RJ11 connector, which is basically just a regular telephone connection cable. The cable modem is connected to the internet using the coaxial cable. Both modems broadcast a Wi-Fi signal to the local area network and are equipped with Ethernet cable connections for their wired local area network. So physically, these modems are almost identical. However, their transmission bandwidth and speed capabilities are vastly different. In the early years of the internet, cable internet providers all had different standards. So you just couldn't go out and buy a cable modem. Um, if you were with Spectrum, you had to buy or lease a modem from Spectrum. And if you were with Xfinity, you had to buy or lease a modem from Xfinity. So if you were with Spectrum and you wanted to move to Xfinity, you couldn't take that modem with you. If you did, it wouldn't work. Xfinity will have to provide you with a modem. This was very frustrating to many, many customers and it wasn't exactly great for business. So cable providers got together to come up with a new standard. And the new standard they came up with is called DOCSIS. The very first DOCSIS in 1997, DOCSIS 1 at 40 megabits per second down by 3 megabits per second up, followed by DOCSIS 2 in 2001 with a speed increase at 43 megabits per second down and 30 megabits per second up. Now, neither of these two DOCSIS had channel bonding. So these speeds for DOCSIS 1 and 2 was the maximum speed a cable modem could have at that time. Now DOCSIS 3 in 2006 at 1.3 gigabits per second down and 100 megabits per second up was the first time channel bonding was possible on the cable network. Now in 2016 DOCSIS 3.1 had a speed increase to 10 gigabits per second down by 1 gigabits per second up and DOCSIS 4 in 2017 10 gigabits per second down by 6 gigabits per second up. However, DOCSIS 3 remain the most used DOCSIS today. Uh, currently, uh, some providers are migrating over to DOCSIS 3.1 and DOCSIS 4 is for future upgrades. Now DOCSIS 1 and 2 are both obsolete so nobody is using DOCSIS 1 and two at the moment. Now these are the two modems that I talked about earlier, DOCSIS 3.0 and DOCSIS 3.1. As I said before, DOCSIS 3.0 is the modems that most ISPs are currently using and DOCSIS 3.1 is the modem ISPs will be migrating over to next. Now DOCSIS 3.1 is backward compatible with 3.0. So if you bought a 3.1 modem, it will work on the 3.0 network, but a 3.0 modem will not work on the 3.1 network. So if you're going to go out and buy a 3.0 modem, you may want to speak to your ISV first, just to find out when they're going to be migrating over the 3.1, because once they do, this modem will not work on a 3.1 network, okay? So, the way this all work is here you have DOCSIS 3.0 at 32 by 8. You'll see this written on the box 32 by 8 and what it means is that you have 32 channels down by 8 channels up. So your data which is 1.3 gigabits of data. This is the maximum data that is downloaded on a 3.0 network. This data is divided into channels of 43 megabits and you have the choice of purchasing these channels. So they're 32 all together. You can purchase all 32 43 megabits channels totaling 1.3 gigabits or you can purchase one channel at 43 megabits because each channel you purchase increase your bill obviously. So you have the choice of how many channels you need for your purpose. Okay so on the upstream is the same idea. 
You have eight channels here on the upstream, eight channels at 12.5 megabits per channel, totally 100 megabits. So if you purchase all eight channels, you'll get in the maximum uh, bandwidth of that particular network. So this modem is the fastest modem out there at 32 by 8. You could purchase other modems with starting at four channels down by four channels up. Also eight channels down by four channels up and so on and so forth. So there's a variety of modems that you could purchase out there that may better suit your budget. You don't have to purchase the 32 by 8 if you don't need 32 by 8. Now for the DOCSIS 3.1 modem 32 by 8, this is the fastest modem on the DOCSIS 3.1 network. Now the same rule applies. You can buy modems with 4x4 or 8x4 or whatever. Uh, you don't have to buy the fastest modem if you don't really need it. Now the difference between the 3.0 and the 3.1 network is that with the 3.1 network you have a total of 10 gigabits of data on the downstream which is divided into 32 312 megabit channels so you can purchase one channel at 312.5 megabits or you can purchase all 32 channels if you wish on the upstream same idea eight channels upstream at 125 megabits per channel totally one gigabit of data on the upstream. So you can purchase one channel at 125 or you can purchase all eight channels at 125, totally one gigabit. Now let's take a look at DSL lines. We have five different types of DSL lines here, ranging from ADSL1, ADSL2, ADSL2+, VDSL1, and VDSL2. With DSL lines, the greater the distance, the more the loss on the line. We're using twisted pair, and the further away the modem is from the DSLAM card, the greater the loss is going to be. The higher the frequency as well, the greater the loss is going to be. So with high frequencies, the line has to be shorter. So let's talk about this and see how it works exactly. Now here you have 8 megabits per second, which is the maximum amount of data you can send on ADSL1. And the frequency that is being used is 1.1 megahertz. Now this data is sent down the line, but at the modem, you're only getting 6 megabits per second. This is a loss of 2 megabits over this 3.5 kilometer line. Now at 12 megabits, for ADSL2, the frequency is the same, and when we send that 12 megabits to the other end, we're also losing 2 megabits of data across the line here because the frequency is the same, right? So when we go to 24 megabits per second on ADSL2+, plus, the frequency is 2.2 megahertz, which is twice as high as this frequency here. So we'll notice that when we send 24 megabits per second, at the modem, we get 20 megabits per second, which is a loss of 4 megabits over the DSL line. So that because the frequency is higher, we have more loss along the line. So now when we go to 52 megabits per second for VDSL1, the frequency is 12 megahertz. We get no service. And that is because the frequency is so high, there's no way it's going to make it to 3.5 kilometers. This line will have to be much shorter in order to get this 52 megabits at 12 megahertz to the modem. Okay? Now, at 100 megabits per second for VDSL2, the frequency is 30 megahertz. And this definitely wouldn't make it. If, if VDSL1 wouldn't make it, VDSL2 definitely wouldn't make it. So in order for the VDSL lines to work, we have to shorten the distance. We shorten the distance from 3.5 kilometers to 800 meters for both VDSL1 and VDSL2. So at 52 megabits, we're getting 35 megabits over this 800 meter line. So we have a 17 megabit loss across the line here. We sent 52 megabits, we're getting 35. On the VDSL2, we are sending 100 megabits, and the frequency is 30 megahertz here, much higher than 
the VDSL one, which is 12 megahertz. And we have a loss of 50 megabits. Only 50 megabits is arriving at this modem. So the higher the frequency, the higher loss is going to be on the line. In order to increase the data rate, we will have to make the line even shorter here. Okay. Now this is the DSL modem capable of ADSL and VDSL as well. Now this is the front of the modem. This is the back of the modem here. You see the RJ45 Ethernet ports. And here are two RJ11 connections for voice over IP connections, for voice over IP telephone lines. So this is instead of having POTS lines, you can actually have two voice over IP lines with two different phone numbers connected here. At this point here is where your DSL line will be connected. This is where your internet DSL line will be connected. So in this particular case, there's only one port, but on this particular modem, this one port is wired with the pinouts on the inside. There are four pins on the inside of this jack where you can use one jack to connect two DSL lines to this one jack here. So you can have, this is the jack here I drew here. Like this would be one line here, DSL one, the tip and ring. And this would be another line here, DSL two, tip and ring. So you can plug the jack right in here and you'll have DSL one and DSL two connecting, giving you twice the speed that you normally have with one line. Here I have both DSL and cable on the same page here. This to do a comparison. By the way, DOCSIS 1 and 2 are both obsolete, so we're not going to be using those. We're going to be looking at DOCSIS 3, 3.1, and DOCSIS 4. When you look at the speeds on DSL lines, you see 8 megabits, 12, 24, 52, and 100. But on the cable lines, you see 1.3 gigabits, 10 gigabits, and 10 gigabits, and the upstream is also much higher than the DSL. So you may look at this and you may say, wow, cable is so much faster than DSL. Well, I wouldn't say that cable is much faster. I would say the bandwidth is much higher and it's possible to get higher data rates, but on an individual modem basis is not that much faster. So let me explain that to you. Cable is a shared service. This data here could be shared with over 100 modems. So when there aren't many people on the line sharing this service, yes, you can get a high data rate. When there are a lot of modems on the line, like at high peak times, the data rate could be as low as ADSL speeds. So I'm going to be talking about this on the next slide a bit more. As I said on the last slide, the cable is a shared service, and this is how it is shared. We have DOCSIS 3 CMTS. CMTS stands for Cable Modem Termination System. And connected to this is a coaxial cable which goes out into the field and all the customer's lines are connected to this same coaxial cable. So this coaxial cable is carrying your 1.3 gigabits of data. And this 1.3 gigabits of data is divided into 32 43 megabit channels and these channels is what customers here will purchase this customer may want to purchase just four channels at 43 megabits per second another guy may say okay I want just one channel somebody else may say okay I want all 32 channels and another customer may say they want something else so customers have their choice and pick it how many channels they want this 1.3 gigabits of data is shared. It's shared among all of these modems, and it could be well over 100 modems. Uh, okay. So let's say that it's three o'clock in the morning it is where hardly anyone is on the internet. So this one customer who has a modem, which is capable of 32 channels down by eight channels up. So he's getting all the bandwidth so he goes online and he's streaming video or downloading some large files. He can do that really quickly because there's no one else online. So he would get all the bandwidth. But as it get later in the morning and a second person come online 
And this person also want to download large files with the 32 by 8 modem, 32 channels down by 8 up. So they can download just as much as this guy can download. So now they're splitting the data evenly. This guy is downloading 650 megabits per second and this guy here is downloading 650 megabits per second of data. So it's being split evenly among them now. So now later another customer comes online. He has a 4x4 modem, 4 channels down, 4 channels up. One channel is 43 megabits. For 4 would be 43 times 4, that's 172 megabits per second. So this guy here is going to demand 172 megabits per second. So these modems here now have to share the, some of the bandwidth with this customer here as well. As time goes on and more people come online, you'll find that this data is divided more evenly. And you'll find at times and peak times, like between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. at night, most people are on the internet using it. So when you find so many people are actually on the internet at the same time, the modems are going to get a lot slower. And this is where it could slow down pretty close to ADSL speeds or right at ADSL speeds, depending on how severe that slowdown is. Now comparing this DSL line here with the cable, we have a VDSL2 line at 100 megabits per second, sending over twisted pair for 800 meters at the modem we get 70 megabits per second now this wouldn't change because this speed is not sheared whereas these customers here are sheared so yes they can get very high data rates during non-peak times but at peak times the data rates slows down immensely if this video has been helpful to you and you would like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.